Hi, I'm Ash. I'm a social scientist and I make videos about sociology and sometimes I make vlogs. Today, we're going to talk about why people believe in ghosts from like a sociological lens. Let's get into the video. So I thought this would be a good topic considering it's like quite close to Halloween. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this edited before Halloween. We'll see how we go. But I thought to celebrate spooky season, we could take a look at why we as humans like to believe in ghosts. I think that I sit on the fence somewhere, like I'd like to believe in ghosts, but I need to see like actual proof that can't be explained uh, in some other way, if that makes sense. And I'm wearing these little ghost earrings. Woo! And as always, I've got my laptop with my blog post, so I'll link that down below. And if you are kind of new here, I write a blog called ashycakes.com and sometimes I do a thing called Freaky Friday Files where we talk about creepy, kind of disturbing topics or anything like a little bit odd. I try and do it every Friday, but I don't get it to it every Friday. It's just some Fridays, if that makes sense. So yeah, I'll link that below. Please check it out if you want to as well. The lighting is kind of odd. It's like going dark outside and then it's going sunny. Melbourne weather is crazy. But why do we believe in ghosts? And as I said before, I'm kind of on the fence about it. Like, I feel like I've had some kind of paranormal experiences, but then again, I also feel like they can be explained by other things. That shadow is annoying, isn't it? Sorry, let's do that. So the sociology of believing in ghosts. So the first factor I want to talk about is socialization. So socialization is the process by which individuals internalize norms and ideologies of society or where they're brought up in. I kind of think of this as like social context. So where we are in the world impacts our views of things. Often psychologists will say that socialization is linked to developmental psychology and I absolutely agree with that. This is where people require social experiences to learn and develop as a person, which is just important to our development as a as a whole. Like I like to think about this. Oh, I like to think about this as in relation to like COVID and when we we're all in lockdown. Like we did not feel good because we couldn't socialize. And to relate this back to ghosts in particular, a person might learn about ghosts or the supernatural, paranormal, whatever you want to call it. Uh, through their families, friends, communities, and media that they consume. And in turn, this leads to a normalization of such beliefs. So this is like, could be a belief in ghosts. The second factor I want to talk about today is cultural influence. And I would say this is very similar to socialization. And the definition of cultural influence here that I've put is cultural influence refers to the impact that a culture, including its norms, values, beliefs, and practices, has on shaping the behaviors and perceptions of individuals who belong to it or interact with it. The influence reflects the ways individuals within a culture perceive the world and behave accordingly. So again, to relate this back to ghosts would be to say that someone's belief in ghosts is stemmed in tradition, folklore, religious teachings, and such beliefs can be passed down from generation to generation. The next factor is social identity. So I know a lot of these are just going to kind of overlap and be very, very similar, but bear with me uh, because they are slightly, slightly different and also important in sociology and in general. Social identity theory is how someone perceives themselves compared to others. It's all about the self-concept and obviously there's heaps of readings on Google Scholar and online about if you want to go further, but basically think about how do I categorize myself in comparison to others, like in society or my own social group or my own friend group. And in relation to ghosts or the supernatural, if a person's friend group all believes in ghosts and then that said friend might decide to believe in ghosts even if they don't to create a shared sense of community or a sense of belonging like a way to fit in. It's kind of similar to why people might join a religion, might join a cult, all of that. And then in creating such a belief in this little community it perpetuates the cycle of the belief. The next factor is confirmation bias and I think confirmation bias is really really important to be aware of because it happens to all of us including me and you. And it is one of my favorite things to talk about. 
if you don't know what confirmation bias is, is it is where someone has a tendency to search for what reiterates their beliefs. So whether that's online, through a book or whatever. For example, you go looking for something on the internet, you're going to find it somewhere, no matter what it is. There's always going to be something and that's confirmation bias. So you're just reinforcing the belief that you were looking for. To expand on this, people will favor or interpret information that does support their beliefs. So if someone thinks that they saw a ghost or maybe they've posted a scary TikTok and commenters have agreed that it was that scary thing that they said it was or think it was, the person is then going to interpret it like they experienced it. Next factor is a sense of control. And this one probably is kind of self-explanatory, but having a sense of control over things like death or unaliving might make people feel a lot more comfortable with their own mortality and grief. For example, if someone thinks they've seen a ghost to them, that might mean, uh, not to everyone, but to some people, it might mean that life doesn't just end there. There might be more to life. There might be something else out there. And it also might help with anxiety in certain situations and uncertainty when it comes to passing away. Psychological comfort. So ghosts can provide a sense of comfort, especially when someone is dealing with grief or the passing of loved one. Often people will see ghosts of those who have passed and it will give them a sense of comfort, like see ghosts or it's like a coping mechanism to help them with their grief. And then that brings me to coping mechanism. If a person is dealing with negative things or some kind of trauma, and this is not everyone and not always, they might associate that trauma with something supernatural or paranormal as a way of coping. And in turn, the ghosts become a coping mechanism for what's going on. So that was the sociology of why we might believe in ghosts. And now we're gonna talk about explaining ghosts with a bit of scientific evidence. And obviously I'm a social scientist, not a biological or um, not just a scientist in general. So my view of things is like we have to consider all all areas so sociology factors social factors political factors and even science explaining ghosts with science the first one is sensory deception so this is when our own senses deceive us think of something like an optical illusion for example there are illusions that can be misinterpreted as stimuli that come from external objects if this occurs to someone, it can be very, very easy for our eyes to play tricks on us and see things that might not be there. Some factors that play a role in this include fatigue, low light, suggestibility, so like a ghost tour, and environmental conditions. So in relation to ghosts, we might see something that's not there. The next scientific factor is pattern recognition or pareidolia. I don't know if I'm saying that right. I hope I'm saying that right. But apparently the brain is said to be wired to recognize patterns even when presented with ambiguous stimuli. Therefore, if someone is seeing something, their brain could present it as human form, for example. Think the Rorschach, Rorschach or Rorschach test. Like they are literally just ink blots, but people interpret them as something. Next scientific factor is sleep paralysis. And if you have ever experienced this, I'm so sorry. It is awful and terrifying and no one deserves this to happen. And I'm thinking of making a video of it. I've written a blog post about it as well, if you wanna check that out. But it's just awful, but also interesting. So sleep paralysis is when a person has the feeling of being unconscious but is unable to move basically being awake with your eyes open it often happens in a transitional stage of sleep and often when sleep paralysis does occur to people people often hallucinate and if someone does happen to hallucinate during this time it might be perceived as real and even though these hallucinations can be explained with science a person who has experienced it might believe them to be a real experience with something supernatural or paranormal and I feel like there's not enough research on this because we don't, we really just don't know. Side note, I'm having a really bad hair day and yeah, I'm not liking my hair today. I think it's the humidity in Melbourne. <sighs> 
maybe later I can have a shower and do my hair nice. <laughs> the next scientific factor is cognitive bias or memory distortions. So we all know that memories suck. Just think about the Mandela effect, for example. We remember things wrong uh, to the same... No, two different people at the same event could have two different memories of that same event, but they both experienced them. Um, so if someone is recounting a story with a ghost or about a ghost, it would be very easy for them to remember it differently or interpret it in a way that might not be specifically to, um, correct to what actually happened. I know this sounds really confusing, but one way I like to think of this is that movie Memento about memory. I feel like that's just a really, really good example. Moving on now to cultural conditioning, and yes, very similar to cultural influence, but as I said before, we've got to think about all sides to the story. Growing up where there are cultural beliefs of ghosts means it's more likely for someone to believe in said ghosts. The power of suggestion might be really important here. And lastly, an intentional blindness. Have you seen that gorilla video? where people are playing basketball and you never actually see the guy in the gorilla suit. So you're like so focused on watching the people play basketball. I don't know how many people notice it, but I remember having to watch this video in um, a like first or second year psychology course at uni. And like, I didn't see the guy in the gorilla suit until the lecturer went, watch it again and now look out for the guy in the gorilla suit. But basically this is an inten inattentional blindness because you're so focused on something else you don't see it. So an intentional blindness can lead to some people feeling like there's a ghost in the room. For example, a person might feel as if someone is a mist or ghostly if what they are feeling doesn't match up with what's currently happening. So take this example and this is a quote from a research study. Recently, a team of scientists recreated the feeling of a ghostly presence in their lab using a robot. Participants were blindfolded and asked to reach an arm forward to poke a robot with their pointer finger. When participants touched the robot, they also moved their pointer fingers around, however they pleased. While they did this, a second robot hidden behind them would copy their movements and touch their backs. When the hidden robot copied participants' movements perfectly, the participants felt like they were reaching forward and somehow poking their own backs. When the hidden robot moved slightly more slowly than the participants, the participants said that they felt like another person was touching their backs. They also said this made them feel an invisible presence in the room which they described as different from the participants themselves, the scientists and the robot. Kind of like when you feel a ghostly presence in a dark room. Spooky. And lastly, it wouldn't be an ashy video without some ashy thoughts. So I feel like I've definitely had some paranormal experiences in my life and I've talked about them in previous videos. Maybe I can link them below. So I've got a ghost video and I've got like a paranormal video. What am I saying? No, I've got a video about paranormal experiences that I think I've had. And then also a video about creepy things that have happened to me where I've talked about things. Yeah, I am. 50-50, like I just don't know whether they are real or not. I, I really want some sort of scientific evidence that proves they're real. Like I'd love that. What I do find interesting about the belief in ghosts or the supernatural, it's not specific to someone's intelligent levels or their education levels. It's more to do with their social context and I think that's an important thing to note. Ghost belief can also be due to personal experience and all of that. Anyway, happy spooky season. Thank you so much for watching. As I've been saying in some of my previous videos, my goal for 2024 is to get to a thousand subscribers before the end of the year. And we're close to 400, so it would be amazing if we could bump that up. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more sociology videos and vlogs and things like that. But yeah, I'm Ash and I'll see you next time. Bye!